What's going on? Just wanted to show you what this joint looks like after a crash couple of days trying to get that piece of junk 3D hobby shops slick. <laughs> what a wreck. In the air, everything's just wiped out. Um, so thanks to Matt Dummeyer, appreciate you, Donny. He, uh, came down from NorCal, from Stanford area to, uh, Palo Alto to, um, have some fun, go flying and, uh, ended up spending that day and a half since it rained that whole, whole day and a half he was scheduled to be here with me um wrenching on that uh what was supposed to be you know or what is i guess a wrapper roll beater i call it but you know it's supposed to be ready to fly was the was the the purchase deal <laughs> and even though we repaired it two-man team for like I don't know. We spent on it 12 or 14 hours. Um, and then I spent another three, four hours on it today before I got it in the air. Um, yeah, it was far from ready to fly. It was like missing everything. The servo arms had just been on, put on, but never used. It had no, none of the bolts or hardware and none of the push rods or control linkages were hooked up on the right sides of any they're all hooked up on different sides with like one screw hanging out one place another screw hanging out another place but like none of the right screws in the right places <laughs> and a bunch of stuff missing and that was just the beginning and then matt he redid all the tanks and plumbings and mufflers and uh throttle servo and throttle linkage um redid the um car butterfly lengthened for more resolution drilled a new hole all that stuff and then the cow was just a disaster all the blind nuts broken all the blind nuts broken in most of the plane either stripped or missing the ones up on the front of the cow were i wish the plane was here to like be pointing at it but it's in the van and then um yeah, then the cow had bungee cords <laughs> running through it to hold it on because <laughs> they had kind of given up whoever owned the plane. It just so beat, just repairs everywhere. I didn't even notice they get to the field that the counterbalance, you know, on the rudder, you see that little thin gap um, between the counterbalance and the vertical stab. They had like a half inch or five eighths inch counter uh, gap between them. And, and I looked and it's because all the hinges were broken and they did some kind of jerry rig fix <laughs> to the hinges on the rudder so when i and i never uh, repaired the landing gear on it which uh the whole plate's broken and the aluminum brackets are broken and everything and i just thought well i'll just be real ginger with it and at least get it up in the air and so it was like 70 percent airworthy <laughs> but i i took it up anyway um yeah, it was supposed to be no money or time investment, so I would have, you know, a carefree attitude, and it's already getting, you know, it was too much money, and then it was already getting to be way, way too big a time investment, plus I put, you know, hundreds of dollars into it, um, in parts, fixing the thing up, oh, extensions, yeah, all the extensions, didn't have any extensions in half of it, and the ones that had were all well, broken. Oh, plywood was broken. <laughs> it's a terrible mess. <clears throat> so did yeah, did a lot of the repairs. Would not all of the repairs, but and then yeah, just before dark, got to the field. Um, I had my other plane too, just in case that I just gave up on the whole idea of flying that thing today. But um, just seemed like there might be just enough time if everything went smooth and. I was able to get it together. I brought all the screws and hardware and everything, which I usually don't anymore to the field. I'm like, if things don't go good, just go home. But I brought everything anyway, and I needed everything. And I need some parts. Uh, Crazy John Barnes, he was there because you need like cotter pin clips, you know, 
um, wouldn't exactly be called cotter pins, but like that, you need a pin to hold the wings on. And um, he had some, Joe had some stuff for me too. And then I had this backup, Joe McBride, and then I had this backup plan. I brought some thin Allen wrenches. I was going to throw some L's in there <laughs> and duct tape them on. I always use duct tape. Uh, but managed to get it all together at the field. Um, and then, you know, the, the night before we had run the, um, we had, uh, ran, uh, gas through the tank to make sure there's no leaks, which was good because there was a leak. And then we took it back apart and then, uh, put it back together, checked it again, no leaks. And then, so then I get, I get out there, um, and I get to the flight line and it's dark already. Sun's already set and I'm just flipping and flipping. I get a pop. Um, then it runs for just a second and then it goes out. Then I can't get another pop and I keep trying I go, Oh man, you know, it must be the reeds gummed up and stuck and, or, you know, the, the carb, like the, you know, pump membranes and everything, they pumped a little bit, but now they're all like, stuck over you know and, and everything from how many years it's been since it's run or what what have you so i think it's the carb and then i'm just still flipping a while and i get joe big right over there and he doesn't really want to flip he's just kind of laughing at me and then now i've been there like 10 minutes now in the dark and then joe goes did you put gas in and i'm like no <laughs> so um i remembered right away when he said it i had not put gas in so it just burned off the tiny bit of gas that was left from pumping out the night before so then I filled it up with gas. It started right up. See? DA. DA rules. So, yeah, it's a DA100 in that thing. It started right up. So it was already dark and all that. And I was like, I didn't even care. And I figured with the rudder problems and the landing gear problems and how rickety the whole thing was, it would just crash on takeoff. So I just punched it. And it actually got in the air. And then you see the video, then Joe rolled the video. So it's only up in the air for a minute. It didn't even, when I looked at the hatch, it hadn't burned any gas <laughs> when I landed. It was just still completely full. But um, went around and Joe goes, I thought you'd rifle roll the very first second. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Because, <laughs> you know, at least you want to like see if the plane flies. And no trim, no rates, expos, no, nothing worked out. Um, and then... I just said, fine, you know, so I rifle rolled that first pass in the video. It's like 30, 35 feet. And then, yeah, it felt like no big deal. It's not very fast, you know, that DA100 soft. And then um, I said, yeah, let me come down lower. So I came around like 15, 20 feet, you know, and rolled that one off. And, and I'm like thinking, okay, next one's going to be 10. But as I was trying to finish that pass, the motor just uh, started to conk out, you know, started to dry out wanted to flame out you know so i let off the throttle and it kind of recovered enough and i just whipped it around chopped the ignition landed in the dark call it call it a night <laughs> but you know it, 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 with no rates next nothing nothing set nothing familiar um nothing trims nothing cg nothing at all it felt good like uh you know i had planned uh even though it was dark and late and, you know, I'd been wrenching all weekend on it. Like I was just going to go lower and lower that, that first flight, you know, and just 15 feet, 10 feet, five feet, two feet, just go, you know, I didn't, I didn't care if I brought it home or not. I was really hoping I didn't bring it home <laughs> and it all felt good enough. Um, but yeah, the motor died out on me. So I'm going to put a new, I have a new carb, for 100 cc size so i'm gonna throw that on there and i think that'll probably be it unless it's the reeds um they get gummed up over time but i don't think that's it you know but we'll, we'll see because usually if the reeds are kind of stuck then it won't even start and then you soak them in gas and then they usually free up and they're good and it didn't run so they can probably carb and i could clean it but yeah i have one i was throwing new one on um i don't know if i get around to fixing the gear you know that'll be if, if i get 10 20 flights on this thing then you know i might fix the gear not this thing <laughs> but that thing um but uh if i had a you know certain attitude uh tonight for sure because because of, of this because of all this piles of crap and me and matt 
out here for two days getting getting that thing going um and you know rushing out the field and it being dark i just had a certain attitude i was definitely you know on my way down to two feet but um we'll see if i have that same attitude i think i will i still think that things like raise the bar for what can be called a piece of crap <laughs> like i could just picture like my crash planes like going hey don't call us a piece of crap if you're gonna call that a piece of crap because we're way better than that thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully I have the same attitude. I think I will. I had no concern. There was no pucker, pucker factor. There was no panic, no fear, no pucker factor um, at all. It was just, yeah. It, that that did work, you know, even though I didn't want that time investment um, or even that much money in it because, you know, I probably got... 17 or 1800 in it now probably 1800 in it you know and that's more than i want um yeah that other that 42 percent i have i mean um it is probably 42 percent. that 122 inch airworks extra you know i'm only gonna have 600 in that like i'm not gonna have there's it's already ready to fly you know so and uh you know i'll have an hour in it or something i gotta fix the tail wheel and then you know kind of clean things up but yeah it's nothing like nothing like this nightmare and, um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm sidetracking, but the, uh, it had, you know, I got more money than I want, but it's not that terrible. And then, um, uh, but way more time investment than I wanted, but still, yeah. Cause it looks, it, it's so shabby looking. Like when I set it up, like we we're all embarrassed, like Joe's, can you like Joe McBride? like, can you move that to the other side of the field? Cause that's like, you know, making our stuff look bad. So that's kind of perfect on, on that sense. And, uh, so hopefully I'll keep that same attitude, you know, that I had today and next time we'll, we'll get nice and low, but I only had a matter of seconds today, you know, it's just, just a few seconds in the air and, uh, already almost did it, but we'll get it next time. And that's it. I just want to thank Matt and, uh, I want to show you guys this mess, which I'm going to start cleaning up right now. And yeah, give you that update. I mean, that video doesn't look like much, but that was, you know, that was all the time it was in the air. Just a, just a few seconds, just like a couple laps around the field. But we'll get it. We'll keep the experiment going. Keep the keep the project going. Project rifle roll on a deck. <laughs> I don't know. Tomorrow's supposed to rain. You know, maybe Tuesday we'll get back at it. All right, checking out.